Hello and welcome back. In this specific demo, we are going to try with Azure Virtual Network peering from VNet1 to VNet2. So let's jump into uh, a quick demo. Uh, before we jump into the demonstration, I wanted to enforce that um, this is what we are going to create within our lab configuration. So what I'm going to do is I'll be creating two resource groups called RG1, that's a resource group 1, and another resource group 2. And within this resource group, I'll create a virtual network here called RG1 VNet1 and also another virtual network in the RG2, that's a resource group 2, RG2 VNet2. So these are the two different VNets. So what would happen is by default, you will not have the communication uh, enabled. So what we do is uh, within this VNet, we'll create a VM called VM01, also VM02 and we log into these VMs and we'll try to ping with each other. In fact, we will disable the or we will enable the ICMP protocol uh, within the Windows firewall of these two operating systems. Then we do the ping. So when we do the ping, the ping request time dot will come by default from each other. So when uh, when we do the when we perform the VNet to VNet peering, that's from this VNet to this VNet. It's nothing but your virtual network here RG1 to RG2 um, while configuring you have the option of the two-way or one-way also so we do the two-way so that the once the peering happens actually the traffic will be allowed and the ping response will come automatically that's what we are going to perform within this lab so here one virtual machine we will configure with the 10.0.04 other one will be with maybe 10.1.04 so and uh, the, these are the resources which I'm going to perform within the Azure portal. That being said, let's jump into Azure portal and create a new resource group called RG1 uh, within my subscription called new and I'll stick to issues, create and go back to again resource group, create RG2 this time, create the resource group, create, it's going to validate. Now we have the two resource groups. Let's go to RG1 and create a VNet. So I'll just go to networks from all services, choose virtual network. And I'm going to give um, the same resource group that's RG1 and the name of my VNet is RG1 VNet1 and a default subnet name is I'm specifying as the RG VNet subnet1. And then that should actually okay. So if you see here the default things which I have taken and created the VNet1. Now by using this VNet I should be able to create a virtual machine later point. So if I just go and do a quick refresh I should be able to see the VNet and you can see the address space and the subnet that has been created successfully. Now within uh, within this RG1 now I'm going to create a virtual machine with the Windows operating system so I'll just give the very basic information here like VM01 that's a paddy hyphen 01 0VM1 and my user ID and the password these are the very basic things right so once I have given these things or oh, nothing in the disks but in the networking I'm gonna choose the one which we have created earlier so you created RG1 VNet and also RG1 VNet1 subnet1 all that information we will be taking and I don't need actually here all these uh, things in the, in the management maybe you know you can ignore uh, oops I think I missed out here uh, something like uh, storage account information but let's come back to that after giving the tags so I'll just uh, remove these always guess diagnostic I don't want this so I'll just turn off the boot diagnostics and the tags given properly and if you see here the pricing and other details and the vnet rg1p demo that's a tag name which I have given so which will be useful later point in terms of the billing when we try to look at so now the vm got created successfully it's time for us to create another vm uh, with a new vnet also if you see that's a zero one uh, which we have discussed within our demo so that's the name of our VNet which we created. Now it's time for us to create one more virtual machine. But this time I'm going to choose RG2 resource group.
and I'll choose the default values as I said uh, it doesn't matter for me just to you know verify but in the networking I'm gonna choose here a new network that's a new virtual network I'm gonna create so click on create new and give here a meaningful name that uh, like rg2 vnet2 and it, instead of the default subnet name I'm gonna uh, give very similar standard like rg2 vnet2 uh, subnet2 so that's what I'm gonna give here just one place two and uh, that's it so the other things are the very common like you create for the management like I don't want boot diagnostics and tags yes I wanted to give very similar tag format so that it will be useful for me in terms of the billing information I know that you know what's taking the charges that's it so these are the very key information so what we have done so far is we created a vnet or in rg1 also rg2 another vnet and we also have in rg1 a vm and also in rg2 also we have a another vm so two vms are there now it's time for us to have a look on our vnets so if you see here rg2 vnet and vnet2 both the subnets and all the information is very clearly mentioned here now it's time for us to connect to these two virtual machines I'll co quickly connect these two virtual machines uh, and also and also disable in the back end the ICMP protocol enable rule so these are the two machines so that when I start a ping so it will not be blocked actually so in your case if you want to disable firewall you can do it or enable only ICMP traffic uh, between these two VMs that's from the Windows firewall configuration so I'm just um, showing you here I config information and simply that's a configuration what we have done so I'll just ping to 10.0.0.4 uh, uh, as well as in the reverse side to uh, my 10.1.0.4 and you see here it's request time dot so that tells about the communication is not done now it's time for us to do the quick demo on vnet peering so from my virtual um, networks I'll just go to the peering under settings and you have an add option this is where you're gonna click on add and give a meaningful name so here I'm just giving peering from rg1 vnet to uh, rg2 vnet so that's the uh, proper name I should be giving and if you see here in the PPT we did talk about the resource manager and the classic specific one where you can choose the model you wanted to deploy so in our case um, we are using the RG2 which is in our resource group so I'll just choose the default as the resource manager model and uh, since it is RG2 I have to rename to this proper name here and uh, that should be RG2 and uh, for the name of the peering from the RG2 oh, that's a resource group 2 to RG1 that's a two sides so we talked about you know one one to here say let's say RG1 uh, one to here and similarly if you are wanted to communicate from the RG2 to 1 you need to you know um, configure these specific settings so we are going to give the naming format here for this and later point I can enable here whether I wanted to configure RG1 to RG2 or RG2 to RG1 so you need to give here the name but you can disable whether you don't want the configuration or you want a configuration so this talks about the peering either one side or two sides so that's the advantage uh, where you can you know choose here so you don't need to again redo the complete work simply you can enable this checkbox or this uh, button so that it will enable from RG2 to RG1 similarly from RG1 to RG2 uh, this is gonna work and um, so I give the proper naming here and later point um, I can also forward the traffic from RG2 to RG1 with the forward traffic settings uh, which I don't have here so I've given the proper naming convention I feel and I'll just go to the down section where I talk about so you have here of uh, the configuration for the forwarding also the VPN transit so let's say these two uh, vnets are uh, wanted to um, go and communicate with your on-premises network that's a checkbox you're going to enable actually we've been gateway specific settings but we don't have that so 
as we enable uh, let's you know start these virtual machines on the screen to bring and have a look on it so in the back end it has successfully created looks like so in a, any minute we will see the complete ping request with a response so you see here the replay is coming up and also from other virtual machine also coming so th that uh, tells about you know two-way communication is now enabled because we have taken the two uh, buttons enabled from rg1 to rg2 as well as rg2 to rg1 and if i just go and have a look on my peering uh, specific settings this talks about uh, if you want to you know disable from uh, from the rg1 to rg2 or rg2 rg1 so these are the settings you can configure and uh, I hope this lecture is useful for you. Thank you for watching this.